Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. I am so glad to see all of you here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome each of you to worship, whether you are worshiping here in our sanctuary or at home. We're so glad that you have joined us this day. If you are a guest that's with us this day, we are glad to have you also. We invite you to take a guest card from the pew, fill it out, and then you'll drop it in the offering plate as you leave the door so we will have record of your visit with us. So now let us take a few moments of quiet reflection as we listen to our prelude to center our hearts and minds on the worship of our God. So let's worship together. Good morning again. I invite you now to open your worship guide as we read responsibly our call to worship. Listen and hear, all you people of the book. There is one God who created all time and space. Our hope is in God, who made heaven and earth, all creatures and land. You shall love God with all your heart and soul. You shall honor God with all your mind and strength. We will praise praise God God as long as we live. We will sing sing God's God's glory all through our lives. A second commandment is like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God God watches over strangers, widows, and the workers. We honor God by honoring thee, our sisters and brothers. Bow with me now in prayer. O Lord God, as we come before you this day, and this hour that has been set aside, gathering as brothers and sisters in Christ, 
with the sole desire that you would be lifted up and praised. Lord, we gather as humble children, listening for you and knowing that your presence will be with us. And Lord, we pray that at this time, we would devote our sole attention that through the power of prayer, the singing of praise songs, the reading of your scripture, and your inspired word would lead us closer to you this day. Lord, now as we begin the service, be with us. For it's in the name of Christ we do pray. Amen. I invite you now to stand and sing hymn 246, The Church's One Foundation. Please stand, singing all verses. like to welcome these folks who are worshiping with us from home this day, Deanna Heishman, Michelle Medlin, and her daughter Erin, who live in Kansas, um, Brenda Markey, Bobby and Kelly Butler, who are in Tennessee, Marja Kitts, and Diane and Mike Goodwin, who are in Florida. So we're all glad that you joined us this day. So kids, y'all come on down for children's time.
good morning. How are you doing? Doing good? Okay, we're going we're gonna to take a field trip. So can y'all go with me on a field trip? Oh, do you see us on, you see yourself on TV up there? That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, all right, we're going to go on a field trip. I'm going to put my mask back on so I can walk around. Y'all come on, y'all come with me. I'll go back here first. I think y'all know a little bit about this area back here. I want you to tell me about this wall right here. What do you see? What is that? It's what? Cracked? Yeah, look, can you see up there? Look way up at the top. Can you see way up there? What do you think that is? It's all cracked, isn't it? You know what that is? That's from water. You thought that's from water where water came in. That's not good when water comes inside the church, is it? Mm -hmm. We did. We have had floods. Yes, we have. That could be. Well, come on. Let's go look over here. Let's go on this side. Y'all come on. Let's go this way. And go over here. Can y'all wave to everybody over here in the south wing? Okay, let's see. Let's look up here, too. Come, come. What do you see? What cracks? From, what do you think that's from? Rainwater that's And if we had more time, we would go outside and walk around the building, and I would show you all kinds of places where we have lots of things that have, that have happened outside, including floods and things that have just broken over time. But let me ask you a question. Do you know something? I don't know if you can remember, but um, before COVID started, we did not have these TVs, did we? Or the cameras, y'all remember, remember that? You don't remember that? Well, we didn't have them. That was something new that we were able to put in. And one other thing that we've been able to do that's new is we have new air conditioning in here. Do you ever do you remember ever coming in here on a Sunday and it was really hot or really, really cold in the winter? Some of the adults will remember those times, right? Grown ups when it's been really hot and really cold. We have brand new air conditioning in here and heat. It'll be really nice when it's cold. We'll be nice and warm. Just like it's nice and cool in here today, right? It's almost a little chilly, isn't it? It feels good. Well, we are getting ready to start a campaign, and you'll hear Mr. Shane, Mr. Shane up there, and Mr. Marlowe in just a few minutes are going to talk about it. Mr. Marlowe's back over that way. There he is. He's waving to you. You see him? They're going to talk about some ways that we're going to try to fix up our building because we have a lot of work to do here. And so what this right here, see this little poster in front of you right here? Every Sunday, I want you to help me. When we have money pledged towards our goal, we're going to take off one of those little one of those little posters and see what's underneath there. Okay, can y'all help me with that? Can we do it now? We can't do it now. We've got to raise some money. So every Sunday, though, we'll talk about it and we'll take one off if we we have to raise. Can you tell me how much that says on each one of those little squares? Twenty five. Thousand dollars raised. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, but if we all work together, we can do this together as a church to fix up our building so that they will be here for all of us, but also for folks down the road. So will you pray with me, please? Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for our church. Help us to care for our church. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. You can go back to your seats. I invite you now to stand and sing our second hymn, hymn 264, where charity and love prevail.
So our prayer this day will be a responsive prayer that you will find on the screen. Will you please pray with me? Young and old, sons and daughters of God, all who are the diverse creations of God's imagination and love, we join in praise and thanksgiving as we worship the one who brings us together. We come to this place bringing our varied stories, our unique gifts, and our distinct calls to serve. We come together in partnership and mission, knowing that we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to serve others, to seek justice, to offer the hope of the resurrected Christ. We are called to be the body of Christ, a community of believers, a household of faith, a communion of saints, the people of the covenant. We are called to the one high hope of our high calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. As members of the body of Christ, we covenant together in this hour to build on our sure foundation of Jesus Christ our Lord and to seek the vision of Christ's hope for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So first let me say thank you to Dennis for filling in for me last week. I'm Shane and I got a chance to get away to go to the beach. We weren't able to go anywhere this summer because Shane had a new job starting. So we went away to the beach and had a wonderful time. And when I came in this morning, I was like, where happened to my stool? And then I remembered that Dennis is not as short as I am. Doesn't have to stand on it to preach, but thank you very much for filling in for me. We are, we are very blessed to have folks um, Al and Dennis and Mark and others that are willing to, to, to fill in so that I can get out of town every now and then. And you all get to hear someone different, which is wonderful. So today I'm going to be reading from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with another And seeing that he answered them well, he asked Jesus, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. 
Will you please pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the name of our sermon this day is What the World Could Be. Well, I like to think of myself as a practical thinker. I like to think about what realistically can be done. For instance, I'm the one in our family who looks at our finances and determines what we can and can't do. And I'm the one who decides on Saturday how many projects we can take on. Now, Shane, on the other hand, he is the dreamer. He is always dreaming of what else could be. What if we bought this? What if we went there? What if we did that? Well, our friends Matt and Stacy Doyle in South Carolina, Stacy is the dreamer, and Matt, he's the practical planning one of the two. So we have laughed for years and years that if Stacy and Shane were to get married, the two dreamers, they would be very broke, but they would have a great time getting there. Isn't that true? That's true. So when I read passages of Scripture like the one I just read, I wonder how on the earth can this possibly come true? How can we practically do this? How are we to love our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our minds and all of our strength? And then the most unpractical of all verses, how are we to love our neighbors as we love ourselves? Because I began to think back about all the different neighbors that we have had through the years. I grew up next to Eric, who used to let our dog out of the backyard fence. And then I would have to chase the dog all over the neighborhood trying to get him back in the fence. Then when Shane and I lived in Richmond when we were in graduate school, the guy who lived above us in our apartment carried a pistol stuck in the back of his pants and he had people going all times of the day and night into his apartment. And then he would pitch these fits and I guess he was jumping up and down. I don't know what was going on, but our pictures would fall off the wall downstairs. It was that loud. And then in our very first house we bought, we had the neighbor next door who refused to talk to us, and she would run back in the house whenever she saw us. And then the next house we bought, we had some, a neighbor behind us who had these big Christmas parties, and they invited everyone on the street except for us. So when I think about practically loving all of my neighbors as I love myself, well, that sounds absolutely ridiculous and not very practical. Reinhold Niebuhr wrote about Jesus' vision of love that we find in these scripture passages as the impossible possibility. The impossible possibility. And as a practical thinker, I think that he is on the right track. Well, let's think for a moment about the word love. You know, the word love is used in excess today and in many frivolous ways. Advertisements would have us believe that love is a feeling, love is equated with happiness, and that love with a spouse or partner makes you complete. Yet loving with your strength and your mind and your soul surely widens the scope far beyond the realm of feelings. The scope is widened to commitment and, how, and to making a choice about how we treat someone. To love God with all that we are means that we love as God loves which means that we love all people. It means living out what it would look like if, if we as a church and society actually loved whom God loves 
with the extensive and unrestricted love of God. This is not a love that's limited in space to a romantic relationship or a nuclear family or limited in depth to times when it's convenient. No, this is abundant love. Love enough for the whole world. This is a love that is a complete giving over of yourself to God. We love God because God first loved us. However, when we are required to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we are not loving our neighbors because they first loved us. In fact, we are to love our neighbors even if they refuse to reciprocate that love. We have to see them as God sees them, as one desiring of all of our love and commitment. We have to develop an unwavering commitment to the well-being of others. Imagine what the world could be if everyone loved as God loves. It seems to be a very impractical vision, but it's one that we are called to be about. St. Augustine wrote, Whoever, therefore, thinks he or she understands the divine scriptures or any part of them so that it does not build the double love of God and of neighbor does not understand it at all. Just as in Jesus' time, when they were called to show love and compassion to the widow, the orphans, the foreigner, the poor, and the slave. Today, we are called to show love and compassion for migrants and for refugees, for the poor and the homeless and the hungry, for those who are victims of ecological and economic injustice, those who are ravaged by war and disease and violence. What would the world be like if we were to live into this calling? Well, have you ever been to a wedding and a portion of 1 Corinthians 13 was read? You know, it says this, Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth, and it bears all things. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Pastor Amy Butler says that she loves to read these verses at weddings because she says it's a reminder that though the wedding day often seems to say the opposite, love is not about things that are beautiful and having no doubts about how you'll make a life with another person. Love is not about being happy or having your needs met just as you want them. Instead, love is about choosing to live in faithfulness even when you don't want to. And love is about a high calling to move from the common narrative to a deep and abiding commitment to living life the way God calls us to live. Well, friends, today is the kickoff of our financial campaign in which we are seeking to raise $300,000 so we can continue the good work of our talented and dedicated building committee to repair our buildings. Our buildings have been here at the corner of First Street and Royal Avenue and Union Street since 1913 when this sanctuary was built. And this church has been a beacon of light into this community. These buildings have been used for generations to teach people about the love of Christ. The baptismal pool, first the one that is underneath this platform, and the one right back behind these curtains, this baptismal pools have seen hundreds of people confess their faith in Christ and commit to following him. These aisles have seen countless smiling brides and nervous grooms 
who come together to begin their married life. And these aisles have seen hundreds of bodies of the saints who have gone on before us as we mourned their passing. And literally thousands of sermons have been preached from this pulpit and tens of thousands of hymns and anthems have been sung here in this space. Countless prayers have been prayed and many pieces of bread and cups of juice from Holy Communion have been consumed in this room. And I would venture to say that there have been some naps that have been taken in these pews too. Not today, of course. This sanctuary building has stood here on this corner for 108 years. The education building for 55 years and the fellowship hall building for 21 years. The funds that we're going to raise together will help us repair these buildings so that they'll remain standing for years to come. But the point of this campaign and of all the work that the building committee has done to this point is not just so we can keep these buildings standing here looking beautiful, beautiful and stately. Instead, the point is that these buildings need to be repaired so that ministry can continue to happen day in and day out. So here's a list of what has happened in our building this past week, and I know it's not complete, but it's a good sampling of what has gone on. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, meals were prepared and served to our community. Sixty children were cared for in our daycare. People who were in recovery from drug addiction met. Girls, 19 of them, were educated in the Edith Stein School. The Boy Scouts met. The Shenandoah Baptist Association office was used for ministry. Iglesia Baptista El Buena Pasteur, the Baptist Church of the Good Shepherd, they worshipped here on Monday night. The Rotary Club of Warren County met. The Women's Sunday School class met. Worship took place. Pastoral care happened. And various meetings took place. These buildings are one of the ways that our church can live into the commitment that we love our neighbor fully with no conditions attached. Think about it. We are able to show love to all kinds of our neighbors through these buildings. Neighbors who are wealthy, neighbors who are homeless, neighbors who speak English, neighbors who speak Spanish, Neighbors who are from the United States and those who are born in other countries. Neighbors who are Protestant and neighbors who are Catholic. Neighbors who struggle with the disease of addiction. Neighbors who are very young, are little babies and little children, but also neighbors who are very old. These buildings allow us to serve others, all kinds of people. When you think about it, how very impractical is it that our little, primarily older congregation is able to impact so many lives with the love of Christ? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Love never ends. This is the kind of love God has for us and the kind of love we are called to embody for the whole world. A love that fills our own hearts to the point that we have more than enough to give. So that is what we are asking each person who calls First Baptist Church home to do. Consider how much love that you have been given and how much love you are called to give. Consider how much you are able to pledge so that these buildings can continue to be the hands and feet of Christ as we love our neighbors. Consider what the world could be if everyone joined together in loving as God loves. 
So let us join together to continue to make that a reality here on our little corner in Front Royal, Virginia. Let's dream the impractical dream of the new and exciting ways that we can love and serve God and our neighbors. Friends, I'm ready. Are you? Amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Shane and I this morning are going to kick off our campaign uh, to raise $300,000. The name of this campaign is Preserving Our Future. And I thought this morning with the Children's Church, when Pastor Christie took the children around, I said, all of a sudden my job's gotten easy because uh, I thought I was going to have to do a hard sell. And you can see a couple things right away very easily that we need to attend to. But there are a few things I want to go into. You know, we live in one of the most beautiful areas in the world, in the country. The Shenandoah Valley with the mountains, the rivers, the, the, the streams that we have, and this community that we live in. It's a beautiful community. And these couple blocks we have, there are three churches within this two block, three block area. Episcopal Church just to the north of us. Beautiful old church, quite different than ours, but still a beautiful church. Then we have the Methodist Church, who's just up the street next to us, practically. An old, beautiful, big church. Very beautiful. Then in the middle, First Baptist Church. We're a little bit different in that we have this sanctuary, which is a magnificent building in itself. We also have an education building, fellowship hall. And we have real estate across the street, Anderson property, for future needs. So our present and future as far as assets, we're, we're really in good shape. <clears throat> you know, the uh, pandemic has affected all of, the, of us in the last few years, certainly affected this church. There was a period of time that we could not come and worship. And there was a period of time, very restricted worship, then it became easier, and now it's gotten a little bit more difficult, but we still come. One of the problems is there are too many vacant seats, and that's not good. What is good is the fact we have the digital worship, and we have people that we're reaching that we couldn't reach, could not come, and we reach those people. And that's a big service that we're, at, we're offering. But to me, it's, it's important that we come to this sanctuary. For me, I believe the presence of God exists and is in this sanctuary. And for me, it's important that I'm here on Sunday because that's where I can relate to God. I know the digital helps, but this is where I think we need to be. Now, as some of us and a number of us in the congregation are aware, as we mature and age a little bit, we need a little bit more care for ourselves. Things are not quite the way they were when we were teenagers. I can remember when I was a very young boy, our choir, junior choir, my mother directed, we were up there in that loft. That's where the choir loved. Janice remembers, and a couple others in there remember when the choir was, was up there. The church has changed a lot, and our needs have changed. This sanctuary, as Pastor Christie says, over 100 years old. Education building, over 50 years old. When it was built, it was built with really no air conditioning in the building at all. We put makeshift programs in and done the best we can over the years, but we need to put a, a good system in that building. The fellowship hall, which seems like a pretty new building, but it's over 20 years old and needs repairs. So we need to raise $300,000 to accomplish this. We, we have some time to do this, and we are setting up a three-year uh, program to do that. But some of the needs that we need to address, and Shane in a few minutes will, will show you more visually what some of these are. We need heat and air conditioning replacement for the 20-year-old units in the fellowship hall. 
uh, retirement of the antiquated boiler in the education building, repair and replacement of the education building doors, repair of sanctuary stained glass windows and other windows in the sanctuary building, repair of soffit and fascia boards in the sanctuary, repointing of bricks in the sanctuary, repairing of plaster in the sanctuary building. That was shown to you earlier this morning. Uh, repair of the sanctuary bell tower and possible repair or replacement of the roof to this building. These are a lot of projects and Shane will show you now, I think on a slide presentation, uh, more graphically how uh, these needs can be demonstrated. So Shane, you want to sure. do yours? Good morning. First of all, as a dreamer, <laughs> I've always dreamed of being on the campaign trail with John, so thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so that, see, dreaming does pay off, so I'm very thankful for that. So I would direct your attention to whatever screen you have in front of you, if I could. I'm gonna walk you through some of the projects that we need to raise money for, to fix and correct. So, um, and Kayla and I just kind of have a little signal worked out where we're just gonna go from one to the next. If I could, I'll start with our first which I believe is the heating and air conditioning for the 20 plus year old units in the fellowship hall. If you've ever been to the kitchen over on our fellowship hall building, if you were to walk out of the rear door of the kitchen, you would encounter these units that are sitting there. As you can tell, we have one new unit that money was uh, available to replace. That's a beautiful, efficient, quiet unit. The first unit that you see the shortest out of the group, if you were to walk over there today, You'll find it easily, it's so loud that it would draw your attention. So something's probably not right with it now. You can also tell that most of these units, if not all, are, I'll try to do my signal better, sorry. You're doing such a good job changing slides. Um, and for those of you that are at home and listening, I will try to describe what is in these slides so you two can have the opportunity to understand. So we have one new unit, as you see here, the Goodman unit, I believe it's a Goodman unit that's in this picture. And then if you look at the other units in comparison, most of them are very rusty and old and need to be replaced. Um, again, one of those units, that unit in the picture that you see there now, um, does offer a good bit of vibration and noise. It would make me think something was wrong if it were at my house. Uh, so I feel sure it is. So I know that's a large building and we need to make sure that those units all work and they're in good shape. So that's the group of units there that kind of represent the project of replacement. Um, and, of course, we'd be moving towards a central heating and air opportunity rather than having all of these units. We would rezone things to make things more efficient and that they would work better. The second project is the retirement of the antiquated boiler in the education building. Again, that's the same building, the education building. If you were to go out of the kitchen door, you'd find those five units. If you turn right and go down the stairs into the locked door, there's um, the boiler room. So that needs to be replaced with a central unit. That's a picture that represents the boiler unit that you would encounter while you're down there and the controls. And again, it is outdated and antiquated and needs to be replaced. And then there's some also some rust that is there that of course is inhibiting probably the efficiency of that unit as well. I found one other thing. Men, if you can't find your Bible study class, I found where it's located. Evidently, it's in the boiler room, right outside the kitchen to the right and down the stairs. So I thought that was room 218, just in case you're looking for that space. So that sign is there. I'd be glad to put it up where it should be. We also need to repair or replace the education building doors. And I have some pictures here to kind of represent what some of those doors look like. Most of you know, as you go over to the education building, there's a nice pull on that door. If you were to look do down at the ground level, just about all of those doors have been weathered and damaged and painted over again, and they pretty much need to be replaced. That's almost all of the doors have that damage down at the corner near where the hinges would be. So those doors um, obviously need to have a replacement or at least repairs. The next job, if you look around in this room, you have beautiful stained glass that we enjoy each time we worship or pray or come for some special thing in this room. We need to repair the sanctuary stained glass windows and other windows in this building. So I'm going to walk you through now an exterior view, and then you'll see some interior photos as well of some concerns. This is a window that if you were walking from the education building and you're looking at the choir room, what we now use as our choir room here, 
There used to be a window air conditioner unit in that window. Those thankfully have been worked on and taken out now that we have a better system in this building for air conditioning. But that represents just what the window looks like on the outside. Here's another windowsill with some damage as well as I continue around this side of the building behind me, the south wing towards the front of the church. Uh, we have broken windows along the bottom. This window, um, if you were to go out of this building and you were to go out over here where you came in probably today, as you walk back towards the parking lot and look to your right, there's a little area there that's just kind of has a railing, but there are windows down low to the room that I think um, John told me used to be a room, I think, where they used to have Bible study or a Sunday school class may have met down there. Boy Scouts met in that room recently where there's broken windows down there now. Here is the damage. That's actually broken glass outside of the stained glass window. As you know, most of our windows are covered with plexiglass or some other coating on the outside. Some of that is broken, and that's actually a pile of glass that's laying in one of the windowsills outside. As you look up high, that is the exterior of the window has plexiglass, but the glue that is holding that together has started to come apart at the top. And then here is some damage along the bottom, kind of uh, just above the concrete level of the window sill. You'll see where those are um, rotting, the sills underneath that are supporting the stained glass. These are the beams that are in between the stained glass. As you can see, the wood is rotted and the paint is now chipping off outside. These are on the front of the building, more wood damage to the sill and also to the upper beams that are between the windows. That's another representation there. You can see a different sill out front. That's between the two doors of the front of the church. This is the window that if you were to go out and go to the right, it's just right here on the right. If you walk down the steps to the bottom, there's some broken panes of glass there as well. That would be the front entrance into it, where the Boy Scouts used to meet. And then here's the window that's so beautiful right behind each one of you, right behind Avery and Christian, where they're sitting now. If you were to look outside, and if you'll go to the next picture... In between all of those windows, once again, you have rotted wood and the paint is chipping off between all of those windows. Um, Christy and I walked around yesterday and I don't know if there's glass missing on the front of the church and that space was filled in with a different kind of glass, but it's on kind of either side of the large window. It'd be interesting to know and certainly someone in this room knows, but whatever that panel is that looks different, all of the wood around it is rotted on both sides. One other project that needs to take place is repointing of the bricks on the sanctuary. This is a representation of some of the repointing that needs to take place. That's right outside this door that I'm pointing to now. If you're watching our program and you can't see me, it's the front door that fronts um, Royal Avenue right outside there. That's, you know, you can see the pointing is just gone. We also need to repair the soffit and fascia board on our sanctuary building. If you were to take a walk around with me, you could just look up. Um, as you walk back to your car, just walk around and look up along the edges of the building. This is actually on the back side. If you were to go out the rear door behind Brad and Sue and turn around and look up, you would see that that's wood damage that's there. Um, there's also plenty of gutters and wood fascia that's coming off the side of the building. Some are not even connected. Um, this is a representation of most of the guttering along the front of the building that you can see is rusted and most of the paint is gone. That's another of the same, a little bit closer picture. And then also, um, this is a gutter that's really not even connected to the side. It's actually come loose from that right side. If you were to go out behind Brad and Sue now and turn around and look up, you would see that there. This is the um, board there that kind of covers the walkway into the back of the church. Again, behind our piano, if you just walk straight out, you'd see that probably we need to rethink this back entrance from a enclosure standpoint or um, weathering standpoint and that's how a lot of the wood looks around the edges of the church around the gutters as you can if that was your home we would have taken care of that already and then the last thing is repair excuse me there's two other things repair of plaster in the sanctuary building you kind of had a tour today with Christy and with Christian and Avery there's the crack that um, they discovered first when they walked to the back of the room today if you were to look above that space right here in the back of the room, above our soundboard, you would find that the walls are deteriorated at the top and that plaster, as we took care of at the front of the church, needs to be taken care of in the back. That's a picture of that full wall back there. 
You also have some places around our building in various locations. Um, that is right above Janice Knightsey. If you were to look up right there above her head, you'll see that space. There's plaster on the wall that needs to be repaired. This is a crack that's right along the baseboard right over here where our handbell area is on this exit. And then this is around the windows. Christy took Avery and Christian over and they pointed this out today. A lot of the interior walls of our windows, um, the plaster needs to be repaired from moisture and water damage that has come in around those windows. This is on the back door as you exit here behind Brad and Sue to go out. If you were to grab the door handle, just look down. That's to the right, right here in this room that's carpeted where the steps are. And then finally, that's back here behind where we keep all of our candles and pyramids for our tables and the other things that we put out here with our candles and things for our ceremonies and our church services. That's actually what the wall looks like back there now. We did replace the floor, as you probably remember, but um, that would give you some indication of how little time it's taken for it to get that bad. This floor is not very old. And then the repair of the sanctuary bell tower. Most of you know how beautiful that is, and on occasion we send Reed's home. We should have had him go up today and pull the bell for us to ring our bell tower. If you look at the bell tower up at the top, it's a little bit far, and I was not able to climb uh, the outside of the church to get up there myself to do this, but most all of the wood around the bell tower, that beautifully decorated area up there, the wood is rotting and the paint is coming off of it as well. That's another shot from the other side, but you can kind of see the difference in color there. The paint's missing. And you don't pay attention to these kind of things a lot of times because it's so high up in the air and we just don't think about it. And then finally, repair or replace the sanctuary roof. There are areas there that need to be addressed. Once again, I did not climb to the roof, but I did take a picture from a distance. Um, and that is kind of a closer area of kind of the pitch that's on one of our roofs. And then this other picture kind of gives you a little bit of the whole building. So there are some areas to address. And I think as we... Um, exit today. If you'd like, I'd be glad, John, we could answer any questions you might have about where these places are. But if you would just walk around and start to look, it's just like our homes. There's always something that is in need of repair. So again, to kind of go after my dreamer um, personality, I think it was the Beatles that said, some say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. So I hope that you'll join us and that we'll get the job done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think the need has been demonstrated. So now, how do we get it done? As we earlier stated, we need to raise $300,000. Okay, next week you should all receive a letter. And the letter will explain in detail some of the things we've talked about this morning. So it'll be somewhat repetition. But also included in the letter will be a pledge card. And the pledge card will have many options on how you might give whether you'd like to just write a check for how you feel that you can support this effort, whether you'd like to give weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, it's, it would be all in the pledge card, just how would you would choose to do it. We'd like for you to prayerfully consider what you can do, what the church needs, and what you can do, and we'd like for you to return the pledge card. You can mail it back to the church. You could drop it in the... In the uh, uh, offering plate if you'd like, but we would like to have them return by October the 3rd. Um, if we can do that, that will give us a pretty good handle on how we can, how we're going and how we're doing with this. So it's important that we, we consider this and we respond to it as promptly as, as you can. Also, we'll save uh, Cheney and me phone calls and visits. So, uh, will also <laughs> will happen if it doesn't work like it should. So uh, look for the letter that you should get this week. Also, on October the 3rd, if you haven't re returned your pledge cards, we'll have pledge cards here available if you've forgotten them, but we'd like to have it done by then. We would also like to have $100,000. That's our immediate goal. Have $100,000 raised by the end of the year. So we have a short window to do that, but... You pray on this, give it your best thought. This is a need this church has. You can see there are just a lot of things. Some of these things are pretty expensive, and all of them, when you add it up, uh, the $300,000 is what's needed to cover it. So your prayerful consideration will be appreciated. And that's it. If there are any questions, if not, Chris.
Christy, I'll turn it back to you. So, any questions anyone has? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, John and Shane, for sharing with us the needs of our church and we will all be prayerful as we consider how we can support this campaign to help us continue to be the hands and feet of Christ here on this corner. So we are going to stand and sing together our response hymn, 656, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. So hymn number 656, and I'll be down front if anyone would like to make a decision this day. So let's stand and sing together. Seated. Just a few reminders of things that are going on in our congregation. We are busy collecting toiletry items, toilet paper, and diapers for our Spanish speaking congregation. Um, there are some needs in that congregation, and we would like to take the opportunity to meet those. Also, um, September is a month that we are taking up a collection for the, the, the BGAV and the Alma Hunt offering. You'll see information about that in your worship guide. And then there also is an announcement in the worship guide about a men's spirituality group that Reverend Mark Jordan, I think you will remember him, um, he is leading on Tuesdays. And so if you're interested, there's information in here about that group. And then also Mark's phone number if you'd like to call him and he can fill you in about what that group is all about. So will you please stand now for our benediction. Friends, the challenge is before us to see the world as God sees it and to love as God loves. So go assured now of God's abiding presence in your life. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.